Um, okay, so with that, uh, uh, we'd like to make a special presentation. Um, the AAS Fellows. AAS Fellows are members of the society elected uh, based on their significant scientific, engineering, academic, and or management or policy contributions to astronautics and space, as well as their contributions to the society overall. Dr. Scott Pace is the director of the Space Policy Institute and professor of practice of international affairs in the Elliott School of International Affairs at the George Washington University. Throughout his career, uh, Dr. Pace has contributed to critical analysis, uh, analyses and developed policy options and solutions for leadership of our country at the highest levels. The national policies that Dr. Pace has developed and to which he contributes uh, continues to contribute is an enduring legacy from which our nation will benefit for generations. For this, we recognize Dr. Pace as a fellow of the American Astronautical Society. Congratulations, Scott, thank you. So thank you very much, and um, I, I, I promise not to uh, do the professor thing of first view graph, please, and, uh, and then drone on for another hour and a half. Uh, so first of all, it's a tremendous honor, uh, particularly given the heritage uh, of the society. Uh, I noted the, the photograph on the, uh, the front of Robert Goddard, of course, out at uh, that famous site in Western Massachusetts. Uh, I made a pilgrimage to that when I was in grad school. I went from Boston out to, uh, out to that site to uh, you know, see the marker and, and, and note that, uh, of course, in the historical significance. And uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, kind of coming back a little bit full circle uh, today. Uh, talking a little bit to uh, the colleagues at the table, uh, those of you who uh, know some of my background, uh, I started off in physics and then kind of descended from there, uh, you know, into engineering and then management and now, you know, politics and Sort of, it's so my physics colleagues still make fun of me about you know falling from grace. Um, so, the, but the uh, but that experience of uh, being in and, and around uh, science and working with science uh, is tremendously important to then doing policy. If you're in the military and national security world and you attempt to opine about defense policy and you've never been in the field. Uh, or never actually had to do some of the things that, uh, that the people you're calling upon to do, um, you know, you're gonna miss something. You may be the most brilliant person in the world, but you're gonna miss something. I think in the area of, of science and space policy, unless you've been around hardware, had a learned appropriate amount of humility in front of hardware uh, and, and flown things, again, you're going to, going to miss something. So early on in my career, uh, I had the fortune of working at JPL, 285 an hour as a lab technician. Uh, but there was overtime until it was cut for shuttle cost overruns. Not that I'm bitter about that years <laughs> later or anything. Um, but that being around uh, flying balloons, flying rock sounding rockets, flying space lab payloads. Uh, one of my bosses was uh, Taylor Wang, who uh, flew aboard Space Lab, uh, in which the Chinese National Space Agency still acknowledges as the first Chinese in space, although he was one of ours. Um, so, but that experience of being around multiple different kinds of hardware systems then informs and carries over into at least to being able to appreciate, if not always fully understand, everything that you all are involved with and are, and are doing today. Um, it's very nice to be note, acknowledged about uh, developing space policies, uh, but I have to say they weren't developed just by me. It wasn't like a bunch of people sat around on a yellow legal pad and wrote brilliant prose. Okay, these are things that were multi-stakeholder analyses that involve all parts of the community. I was particularly pleased to see the space weather uh, discussions, which began under the Obama administration. We continued under the Trump administration and continues today under the Biden administration as part of sort of a, a long-term bipartisan, nonpartisan sort of activity for the national interest. Okay, that's the kind of thing that we should be doing. Uh, sustainability of space policy and stability, which we are all keen about, uh, really only comes about when we align what we do with enduring national interests, not necessarily uh, the winds of the moment, but things that are important for our nation's security, for our economy, our role in the world, and aligning with those longer-term interests provide the kind of sustainability 
that we all need to be able to do our jobs. Um, and so um, I'm very grateful again for the acknowledgement uh, here today. And I turn the table back uh, to your, for your keynote speaker and, and others. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. And just so uh, everybody's aware, uh, it's not just that we order a plaque and hand it to somebody. Uh, it's a very rigorous nominations process. All of the existing AAS fellows review the nominations and make uh, and and vote. So uh, it's not a, a, a easily given award, and so it's well deserved. Thank you. Indeed.